For my first brand review of 2023, I thought we could kick things off with where the series really began with Everlane. If you've been on this journey with me for many years and you'll know that I've been shopping there for I would say close to a decade at this point and I've also worked with the brand. So I've come to try out and amass quite a number of staple pieces that they sell. It's all kind of classic basic styles. So this video is going to be split into my review. I'm going to talk about the quality, the sizing and fit, undertone of the garments. I'm also going to talk about the shipping, my shopping experience being based here in Australia and some final thoughts. I'm going to have a little bit of a menu here on screen so that you can see if you want to skip ahead. All right, so let's dive into the reviews. Starting this review with trousers because I just had to talk about these. One of my current favorite styles from Everlane, these lean into that fluid trouser trend we're seeing a lot of right now. It's a forgiving silhouette and makes your legs look very long. These came in a linen for summer, my personal fave, but also in a cotton tensile Lysel twill for the cooler months. You can't go wrong with either. The linen is mid-weight, not sheer, and has a beautiful drape. The twill has more structure to it and is fully opaque. I like the single pleat at the front and the super high rise. I have both pairs in a US 2 so I can wear them around my belly button or slightly higher up when I fasten the hooks onto the belt loop. If I weren't doing that, my ideal size would be a US 0. I highly recommend referring to the sizing chart if you're not sure. They come in two trouser lengths so great for petite and tall girls. Definitely one of the more underrated trouser styles from Everlane. I like that these are straight through the leg and taper in slightly at the ankle. They give you some shape. The quality of the fabric is robust and sturdy. They're a stretchy cotton twill, which makes them very comfortable to wear. I own these in two colors, this military green and in black and the size zero regular. Again, recommend referring to the sizing guide. I'm typically an AU8 if that helps. These look fantastic when worn with low heels or a pointed toe boot. One of those Everlane items I have in multiple colors, the alpaca knit has been a long time favorite of mine. Heathered almond and heathered black are the shades I gravitate to the most, but the dark green Kumbaba is also stunning. I wear a size small. These fit true to size for a relaxed fit. The design has a puffed or balloon sleeve which is cinched in at the wrist so you can add this up or down depending on your preference. This wanders well on a cold setting but do be mindful that the texture will change and become more flat but the fibres will soften more as a result. It can be a little tickly initially so best worn with a layer underneath if you have sensitive skin. Soft but not cashmere cloud soft. A cousin style to the original alpaca knit, this is blended with merino wool and nylon and as a result feels much softer. Cloud-like and fluffy and you won't experience an ounce of itchiness. This has a longer, straighter fit through the body which cocoons or curves just under the bum. It's quite thick so you will get a bit of bulk at the waist when tucking it in, the upside being that it's very warm. It does shed considerably so word of warning here. I'm wearing the size small and would say size down if you don't want such a relaxed fit. Also worth noting that it is currently 25% off. This silhouette is a great style to have in your winter wardrobe. The mock neck provides a layer of insulation all the way up to your chin and the relaxed boxy fit is right for layering if it's especially cold. This is a recycled cashmere and wool blend. So while it's soft, it doesn't come close to rivaling a 100% virgin cashmere sweater. So expect a bit of texture to the touch. That said, it's not itchy, at least on me. I adore the Pumbaba color, a rich forest green which leans ever so slightly cool and feels quite moody and earthy. Born here in my usual size small, the fit is boxy and relaxed through the body. Easily tucks into jeans and trousers the whole way around if you want to cinch things in and highlight your waist. The Cashmere Boxy Crew is also made out of recycled cashmere and wool and as such has the same hand feel as the previous sweater. Though the style is decidedly more cropped, as in, only a French tuck will work unless you're very short-waisted. It has a little bit of texture to it and that same rib trim at the collar, cuffs and hem. The fit is quite boxy and square through the body. I'm wearing it in the color Pumquat, which is a delightful, vibrant sunset shade in my usual size small. Sadly, this cardigan no longer seems to be on the site, so I'll link the crop version, but I wanted to share it as it's a reminder of how wonderful their cotton knit pieces are. Great if you're sensitive to wools. This has a perfectly slouchy fit and it's washed and worn so nicely. Cotton knits like this can be prone to getting little pulls, so be careful with your jewelry. 
I have on the size small here. I suspect this is a style that will come back around, so it's worth keeping an eye out for. Otherwise, Quince do an eerily similar one, which I will link below. They've stopped selling my beloved oversized blazer in black. Such a shame as it is a great basic, but it does still come in four other colors. I'm wearing the toasted tan here, a cool toned heathered beige. This is made from recycled wool and nylon, so it is textured and rough when running your hand over it. It's disappointing to see that the lining is 100% polyester, especially as the outer fabrics are recycled natural fibers. I would have loved if it were tensile or similar. This fits true to size for a slightly oversized fit. I'm wearing the US 4 here. The sleeves are bracelet length on me, so a good contender for petites who want to dip their toes into the oversized blazer trend. My first experience with Everlane's recycled wool was this coat, and it's hands down one of the best items I've ever owned from the brand. I have the original edition, beautifully textured wool that looks and feels premium. It's heavyweight, fully lined, and much warmer than I anticipated. The style is undeniably classic, something that will never date or go out of style. I'm wearing the US 2 here, but I think if I have my day over, I get the US 4 or now the size small. More layering potential with chunky knits. It's since been reimagined, the new version looking to be a similar standard of wool, and I like that the design has been updated to include a button at the collar for additional insulation. Lining on the new design is 100% recycled polyester, so that might be a deal breaker, but it will be very insulating. My favorite denim shorts that I own, you're probably sick of hearing me talk about them by now. I have these in four colors. The denim quality is thick, robust, and being 100% cotton, these feel very secure to wear. What makes these shorts so good is the cut, an A-line silhouette, which we know to be universally flattering, cinching you in at the waist and then flaring out and having a wide leg opening, which gives the illusion of slimmer and longer looking legs. This style fits large. I have three pairs in the 25, one size down from my usual, which is the perfect fit. The black ones are in a 26, and hopefully you can see from the cutaways how the fit differs. The larger size gives me more options though. I can wear them lower on the waist for a relaxed fit or belted with a slight paper bag effect higher up. Consider this a reminder that Everlane denim is good. I mean, really, really good. The way hygiene is my current favorite style for the straighter fit through the leg and super high rise. These are 100% cotton, but will give slightly with wear. They'll shrink back down when you throw them in the wash. You might be able to see that these have need, but again, it's resolved once you wash them. I have four pairs of the way high and would say this cut runs a size large as well. I wear a 25 in all of them and I'm usually a 26 in jeans. Comes in a number of washes and leg lengths, cotton is weighty but soft and they feel very comfortable to wear. The Cheeky Straight 2.0, this is the second iteration of the style which was part of Everlane's initial denim launch. I really appreciate that Everlane is constantly working to improve even their most classic styles. I love these jeans for a tapered straight fit. A great option if you're wanting to transition from a skinny jean to a straighter cut style. These have elastane in them, which makes them ultra comfortable. I recommend sticking with your usual size. I wear them in a 26 with the shorter inseam option. Again, loads of washes to choose from, quite a few on sale too, as well as three inseam lengths. For a while there, the air tees and tanks were all I reached for in the summer. They have a tissue weight quality to them, ideal for warmer climates. Though, as you'd expect, this means that they're not fully opaque. There's some sheerness to the fabric, and as such, they're more delicate than a heavier, thicker tee and more prone to getting holes. The seams on the style will twist, which doesn't bother me as it's quite common and down to how the fabric is cut. The sleeveless style cuts off on the shoulder at a bit of an awkward ankle, which I think is intentional, so you do get a bit of gathering across the front of the tank, which not everyone will love. I wear this tank in a size small, the fit is boxy, and it isn't super long, so there's not too much fabric to tuck into shorts or jeans. I'm always intrigued by clothing with hemp in it, mostly because I associate it with thick, textured burlap, but these tees are anything but. They're a blend of organic cotton and hemp, hemp being a very durable fiber, which is why the presence in a basic like this is so good. The idea to me being that it will be something that will endure more than a 100% cotton tee. 
It's quite thick too, and I love that it's a unisex style. I'm wearing the E2, which is the equivalent of a woman's size small. You'll note that the sleeves are longer, perfect if you prefer a bit more coverage on your arms. Next up, we have the square cut dropped shoulder silk shirt. This is in a wash silk, which has a luxurious look and feel to it really smooth and it's dyed using blue sign approved dyes and manufactured in a lead certified energy efficient factory this silhouette has been around since basically the genesis of everlane and i find that every season it's reimagined in new colors i'm wearing the size four here and would say if you are petite you may like the size down the bottom half is double layered and i've noticed puckering on the fabric since steaming it it's also a very boxy fit. I have to admit that the execution on this style feels a little underwhelming. I prefer their regular long sleeve silk shirts over this one. This dress is what I wore for Christmas day, an easy throw on and go option. Unfortunately, the exact style is not currently available, but it was recut, that's how I got this one. So I'd keep an eye out when the Northern Hemisphere starts to head towards spring summer, as I'm sure it'll come back again, given it was a sellout style. There's a similar silhouette in the sale at 60% off, so I'll link that below. Everlane dresses typically run large, so I always size down. I'm wearing the extra small here, which I think is a perfect fit on my size AU8 frame. It's a breathable cotton poplin and washes well. The print really elevates the style and makes it feel so much fancier than it actually is. Over the years, I've really put the studio bag through its paces. From being a work bag to a baby bag, it's been thrown around by me and dragged around by my son. It's held up incredibly well though. There's little to no scratching or corner wear, and aside from some sinking in and creasing of the leather, it looks great. It's a premium Italian leather, which starts off feeling very stiff and structured, but softens with wear and becomes very supple. Easy to wipe down, it has a single snap closure with a slip pocket on the interior. Aside from the interior slip pocket is one large compartment, so I recommend using interior pouches if you want to keep it organized. This style can only be worn on the shoulder. Occasionally, I find it does slip off, but you can see from the cutaways, it tucks in nicely under the arm. A great dupe for the Celine So Sangle bag. Then we have the mini option, which is the same style as the silhouette, just shrunken, and it is super cute. I like that you have the option to wear the smaller version crossbody as well, which is really practical and functional. This is a great size if you don't carry around too much as it fits in all the essentials and then a few more little bits and bobs. The quality is exactly the same, so I'd expect to see creasing and slumping of the leather with considerable amounts of wear. I don't love the cognac color as it's a very red toned brown, which would explain why I don't reach for this really at all, but it is a very beautiful bag and I don't think you can go wrong with either of these options. One thing I wanted to highlight that I forgot to mention is that Eveline really seems to put an emphasis and focus on using recycled materials, not just with natural fibers, but also with synthetics, in addition to looking for eco-conscious and eco-friendly ways to manufacture their products, something that I really value and they do provide quite a bit of context and information on their website if you want to find out more. We're currently renting while our house is being renovated, which means that a large proportion of my wardrobe is in storage so not every single item I own from the brand is reflected here but I did want to touch on shoes and I will insert some photos my experience with Everlane shoes has been really great I think that overall the quality of the leather that they use is extremely high the craftsmanship is fantastic and they've been pairs of shoes that have really endured and lasted in my wardrobe i think one of the first styles i ever purchased from them was the day heel and this is a design that they are still selling now uh, i do find that sometimes the elastic can pinch the back of your heel so what i would do to combat this when i was at work is just slip my feet out of the heels the day gloves I think are fantastic, definitely more designed for those who have a regular or narrow foot. I have wide feet, but I do generally get on with these. The remit version, which they no longer sell, was probably the best because it had so much flexibility and give. However, the regular day glove style uh, I do own in kind of a mushroom taupe color and I really like them. I enjoy wearing them and I like the fact that they're very light on the feet perfect to take traveling however i do recommend that you size up i'm generally a us nine and a half in everlane shoes because their shoe sizing is a bit funny i'm european 40 
always uh, and I take the day gloves in a 10 just because you need a bit more room uh, they do get eventually the other style that I kind of wanted to mention or touch on are their boots and again I think the boots are great though generally the leather is really thick and sturdy and rigid which means that there's going to be a considerable break in period and if you have wide feet you just might find this a little bit too much or you might like to size up half a size to a full size. Uh, I tend to look at their size guide to actually judge which direction I should go in. Now let's talk about quality and value for money. One thing that I've really noticed over the past sort of six months is that the prices on the Everlane website are a lot higher, or at least considerably higher than they were when I first started shopping the brand. And I'm not sure if this is just a reflection of the fact that materials are getting more expensive or whether they are trying to price themselves into more of a premium category. But this is something that kind of took me a little bit by surprise. From a clothing perspective, I've only ever had one item wear out and get holes in it and it was one of their air tees and this was unsurprising to me because it is a really lightweight semi sheer fabric and it's one that's a little bit more delicate so you could anticipate that is going to wear a little bit more quickly than something that is more dense thicker and weightier. For a few years there, Eveline used to dominate my most worn and I've definitely put the items that I own from the brand to the test. So I can say with certainty that they are items that will endure. However, I do think that if you are on a budget, you can probably find something that is comparable quality at a lower price point. Quince is a brand that does come to mind, especially if you are living in the US. Their colors tend to lean a little bit cooler, so better suited for those who do have a cool undertone or complexion or even a neutral complexion. I have an olive undertone, so find that they generally work quite well for me. Otherwise, I would recommend sticking more to the ivories, blacks, grays, and navies to be on the safe side to ensure that it's something that is going to suit you. The general fit of many of their items is pretty boxy, and the whole idea, I think, is to have that effortless relaxed look so quite kind of loose and almost oversized in a way many of their items you could size down if you wanted more of an intentional or closer fit I find the trickiest items to buy from the brand are their trousers or their denim especially if you haven't had a chance to try them on and you're not really sure so for denim I have done a full denim guide I'm gonna link it up in the cards here so that you can go and have a watch it's very thorough and I go in depth about the sizing when it comes to their denim shorts they fit a size large so size down one when it comes to their trousers, really pay mind to their sizing chart because they have the actual item measurements and this is incredibly useful. I would recommend measuring an item that you own that fits similarly to the pants that you're planning on purchasing to get your exact perfect fit. When it comes to shipping, I find that orders take a considerable amount of time to reach Australia up to four weeks so I would say my average is around the three week mark just based on my last two purchases that I've made so do keep that in mind if you do reach the threshold to get express shipping at a discounted rate I highly recommend taking it up because you'll get your order in less than a week my overall thoughts on the brand I think it is a really good option if you are looking at adding some basic pieces to your closet perhaps you're at that phase where you are looking to build out those core work core staples that are going to be the building blocks the foundations of of your outfits it is a really good place to start because they have a great selection and there's also a really decent color range for all those basics in addition to some really interesting seasonal colors and those are usually the ones that I'm personally most drawn to the category I think Evelyn does the best is denim and this is something I've said for many years I love the fact that it is clean denim it is really sturdy robust and well made I'm also a pretty big fan of their knitwear but tend to stick to their 100% natural fiber pieces although I'd say the alpaca Packernet is probably the exception here because it is blended and I've since learned that that is because our packet stretches considerably so it's often blended with synthetics like nylon to help it retain its shape. As I said earlier I think their shoes are best for those who have narrow or regular width feet so if you have wide feet you might like to explore other options unless you are really desperate for a particular style uh, and I also really like their coats. I think it depends on what you are looking for however their rewool coat just the classic coat is exceptional quality really well made very very heavy and it will keep you really warm too i also like the fact that they use recycled 
bottles for their puffer jackets, of which I have a couple in my closet. So that is an updated review of Everlane. I hope that you found this video helpful, informative, and if you do have any questions about any specific items, please feel free to drop them down in the comment section below, as I'm always happy to do my best to answer any of your queries. Thank you so much for spending some of your day with me. I hope you are having the most beautiful start to your week, and I will see you next time with a brand new video. See you very soon. Bye.